associated with some of these sneakers, sagittia, like-minded and affectionate devotees.
the practice of Christian consciousness in so many temples all over the world. And behind this, Shri Gurudev emphasized that we have to know not just how high the mountain is, but how deep the mountain is. So the height of the mountain, Prabhupada, is how he spread Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission all over the world. And the depth of uh, the depth of the mountain is the depth of his own love for Radha Krishna. The Kunja Yanuradhikani Sita. His participation, participation as an eternal associate. Even when he was performing these external pastimes, spreading Krishna consciousness, he was at the same time planting seeds of bread to pray. And then later when the cloud of our beloved Sri Gurudev's mercy came, then those seeds of bright rain began, began to sprout more and more. He was all his Prajrasic devotee. And this is the background. Uh, this is the background of all of his activities. Srila Prabhupada was always inspired. He was inspired by his Guru Maharaj right from the very beginning, from the very first meeting. He was always helping to push on his Guru Maharaj's mission, sometimes financing temples, sometimes helping the devotees, whenever they visited the city in which he was living. He would serve them, serve them, give up his own room so that they could sleep comfortably. Then later he began publishing Back to Godhead magazine. His Guru Maharaj gave him a simple instruction. He said, if ever you get money, print books. He took it to heart and he made a, a move for distributing books, which is absolutely unprecedented. Gigantic articulated trucks go backwards and forwards across the continent carrying hundreds and thousands and thousands of his transcendental literatures. He was also inspiring. He inspired his disciples to do quite impossible things. At the height of the movement, the Hare Krishnas were practically all pervading. There was one devotee in, in, in Sweden, uh, somebody met him on a parking lot. And the man said, is there one parking lot in the whole of this country where you Hare Krishnas aren't there? He said, I don't know, but if you know it, please tell me, we'll go there. When Srila Gurudev, after Srila Prabhupada disappeared, so Srila Prabhupada's disciples started coming to Srila Gurudev 10, 15, 20 years after. And they said, what can we do? We've been chanting for so many years, but we still don't have any taste. And Gurudev said to his disciples, that, just see, how can they chant 10, 15 years without taste? This is Guru Nishtha. You should have Guru Nishtha like this. Prabhupada inspired yet. His disciples, even disciples who left the movement, they didn't have anything to do with Krishna, but Prabhupada was in their hearts. Prabhupada was beautiful. He had a beautiful smile. There's one video where he's coming back from India, and he's coming into the airport and seeing all the devotees. And his smile is supernatural. Amazing, this loving smile to see his very dear devotees. In one purple, he says that the Pure devotee, his smile is charming the hearts of all the conditioned souls. There's so many, so many, so many photographs of Srila Prabhupada, and always it's, he's in some very, very deep mood. He looked like not just somebody from a different dimension, but he was moving in a different, different dimension, and at the same time he was with us. Unprecedented beauty. He was very aristocratic. His head was like this, but not what? He was proud. But he was an ambassador from the spiritual world. Very beautiful the way he walked, his head, back, surveying. The whole world had been given to him by Krishna. And he was looking like this. Mm. He was lordly. Uh, one of his disciples wrote him from London, when the first six households were in London. And they wrote and said, We're looking forward to when you come. We think this will be the most significant event since Julius Caesar invaded England. And Prabhupada wrote back and said, yes, I'm thinking like that. <laughs> but at the same time, he was very humble. Completely Sharanagya. The Pujari in Shiva Sangha, he saw there was one household gentleman, an Indian household gentleman, who used to come from time to time. And he would sit and chant at the back of Shiva Sangha. Then, for some time, he didn't see him. And then one day again he came and he was dressed in sannyas, 
rose. And he was sitting at the, uh, standing at the back of Shiva's hand and chanting and chanting and crying and crying. So the Pujari asked him who he was. He said, My name is Abhay Charanarudha, my Bhagavad uh, Sami. I'm a very, very insignificant servant of my Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasakta. He's given me an impossible mission to preach in the West. Tomorrow I leave in my ship to the West. In his diary, there's just one line he says, Maya Bhur. So he went to pray completely helpless. He always had that mood when he was praying on the, uh, just after he got to America, he was praying, oh, I haven't got any ability at all. I've got no Bhakti Vedanta, I've got no Bhakti, I've got no Vedanta. So you make me dance, make me dance, make me dance. Completely helpless. And therefore so powerful. He was a revolutionary visionary. Not only spreading Krishna consciousness, but he wanted to reform society. Nobody dared, like, nobody dared even think that Tango Bhaktivinoda's movement could go outside of India. And for Prabhupada, it was a complete reality. Not only Krishna consciousness everywhere, but a reform of society. So, uh, we're very fortunate to be gathered here under the uh, direction of a pure devotee, such a pure devotee as Shiva Gurde. Not just Mahabharata, a pure devotee. But the next Acharya in our Bhagavad Parampara from Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srila Gurudev's Guru Maharaj, Srila Param Gurudev, he gave Srila Gurudev, he gave Srila Prabhupada sannyas under the direction, under the, the request of our Srila Gurudev. And it's significant that Srila Param Gurudev, he installed Sri Sri Ramadana Bihari on the altar in Mathura. We know that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was none different from Sri Sri Ratna Krishna. So also standing on the altar is Goranga Mahaprabhu from our Srila Prabhupada. So these, Srila Prabhupada preached very extensively and Srila Gurudev preached very intensively. And then uh, Srila Gurudev is, Srila Prabhupada is so inspiring, not only he inspired his disciples like ourselves, but he also inspired such a Mahabhava disciple to preach all over the world, following his Following him, beginning to complete his mission. So, whether we can glorify Srila Gurudev for continuing the mission of Srila Prabhupada, or whether we glorify Srila Prabhupada as appearing in the form of Srila Gurudev, it's a very mystical and mysterious relationship between the two of them. So, on this day, I pray that Srila Prabhupada is not to speak. He said, The purity is the force. What kind of purity? Shuddha Sattva. Without Shuddha Sattva, actually we can't practice and we can't preach. So I'm praying for that purity. I'm praying that He'll allow me to, in some way, help Him to fulfill, begin to fulfill His vision of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world, preparing a platform for preaching. And I pray that in future lifetimes I can serve Gurudev and Prabhupada together as an intimate servant. We just have one small announcement that this evening, after all of the speakers and uh, our team and everything, we will be showing a very nice movie of Shiva Prabhupada here in the temple. So this is by the courtesy of Shandra and and the crew. They'll be setting everything up and everyone can watch. So, the next speaker I'd like to call on one of our uh, senior Prabhupada disciples who did very much uh, preaching efforts in uh, France in the early days to help establish Prabhupada's preaching mission there, Sriman Jayant Krishna.
Uh, of course, Sri Ramana was able to do that. That's why all his disciples were attracted to him because he was giving that love of Krishna. Now, the group is coming in the material world on behalf of Krishna. One time Ramana was saying that uh, there is some uh, banisters in the spiritual world, some lawyers, they come to plead at Krishna's court and they say, uh, I'm coming from this side of the material world, the other side of the Biraj River, where everyone is suffering so much, you please come in this world. Or you please send someone. They come to plead on behalf of the conditioned soul because their heart is bleeding. They see us you know, taking the uh, source of suffering for a source of enjoyment. Well, this is the very nature of Maya, of Akita of Ignorance, the very definition of it is that taking something which is temporary for eternal, real, unreal for real, uh, source of suffering for a source of pleasure, that is an idea. And the Guru is seeing that, he sees that as you know, drowning in our you know, hopeless you know, aspirations. Prabhupada said one time, you have to know something, your desire to be happy in this world will never be fulfilled. Do not shy, it is holding against hope. And no such means that. As long as I have a natural body, I will have to suffer. And there's no way that you can alleviate this suffering except when you're going to soothe your heart with the love of Krishna. And as long as no one can arrive on Krishna, nothing or no one, he is the only one who can fulfill the deepest aspiration. And Prabhupada came in the West and was teaching that. In the West before, everyone was thinking, who is God? Oh, he is a big beggar in the sky, a big water supply in the sky. Or a big you know, policeman looking what we do with our genitals. That's what is not. That's probably everyone's idea in the West. What is God? That's this type of a feature. But Prabhupada came to introduce Krishna. And you all know that uh, example once more. I said, but why do you insist on a society, international study for Krishna consciousness, but not God consciousness? I said, no, I have come to teach that Krishna is the name of God. I see the first class, the first lecture every day when he came in all this diagram where they said before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, everyone was thinking that Bhagavata Sah, the essence of Godhead, is his majestic feature, Ashwari. I think the first lecture, right? And in other words, before Prabhupada, everyone was thinking this is God, that Ashwari, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh. That majestic aspect of God. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to reveal, no, God is the lover of your heart, of your soul. He's a foolish boy uh, who can give unlimited love to a little amount of people. And he's the person who can satisfy you. And you have a relationship of God with him. Uh, give up all the relationship of this world because they can't be able to satisfy you. But God has a relationship of love with you and that is what you should look for. And Prabhupada, as ambassador of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, came and he was presenting Krishna to us, begging, please accept Krishna, in so many ways. Prabhupada was making so many compromises, he made so many efforts, he made it so easy for us to have access to the most lofty conception of God. You should look at the uh, concept of Anjali which means that you're not even trying to have a personal relationship with Krishna, but you will serve his most beloved, his best servant, Giving up the very idea to have a separate relationship with him. This is the highest, purest, loftiest concept of God. And Prabhupada came and extended that to us as a gift, matchless gift. And said, Take, it is available. Not only he did that, but even after leaving, he also made arrangements so that we could continue to proceed on the path. Like Maharaj this morning was saying, Prabhupada uh, told Gurudev on his. Uh, Departure bed. I don't like to use the word death bed. Oh. On the departure bed, I have brought so many monkeys. I have no, a big net. I brought so many monkeys on this side, but I could not train them properly. You please help me to keep on training them. So, proper little arrangement inside this movement and outside this movement. Outside in the form of Shilaburde and inside in the form of Shilagoga in the morning. Prabhupada said, if I make one pure devotee, my mission will be fulfilled. And he certainly fulfilled his mission with Shri Adho in the morning. One, I remember when I was crying for Prabhupada, please send me someone I can surrender to, some you know, saint, 
My service was sufficient that he devoted in his camp, and I had no space at any either. And I said, what should I do now? And I started to think, oh, I should also pray for myself. And I started to pray for my priest, so in some way. And I should have almost came in 1995 in France, I translated his lectures, but he was speaking on me all the time, said, so what do you have to answer to that? What is your answer? What do you have to say? I said, this is very strange. I trusted so many lectures before, no one ever did that to me. So I went into his room and I said, Maharaj, I understand you really want me to grasp clearly what you're saying, so I can run it in French. But it seems to me there's something more than that. And tip for that, he answered, aren't you praying for God for that? And I said, oh, how does he know? And slowly, slowly through my brain, it started, oh, maybe he's the person I'm praying for. And I started to ask him directly, oh, what is the Niti, the etiquette for Siksha Guru? And he looked at me and said, no, no, don't stop to look at me as someone special. He was just asking Prabhupada for help, and he told me, please take care of him. Like that. So Prabhupada made arrangement within his movement for those who had that opportunity. And also of this movement, he made also the arrangement, Shri 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 Dhamara, Shri Shri Guru did. So, we are in good hands, so this is a good news we can all share and rejoice in. We are in good hands because we have a whole uh, army, battalion, no, of well wishers which are so much affectionate for us. I think a few years ago one of our governors was uh, saying that uh, once someone gets uh, born into a family, then automatically he has parents, grandparents, uncles, all kinds of well wishers and they all want, they all attach him as soon as he's born and they want him, they wish him well. So in the same way, as soon as someone steps into this question and not just as movement, then he is endowed with a whole parampara, that is the very case, of well wishers who are sending their blessings to him all and watching, oh, no, he's okay, no, he's chanting 16 rounds, no, he doesn't space out so much, no, he's following the principles, he's going out, no, he's straightening up, no, he's learning more and more, and then each other is blessing and waiting, oh, another nice soul is coming, oh, he's growing up, growing up, and then suddenly a blessing, we have the whole community, this year we don't have the whole power, we have it in, um, going up, uh, but if you look at them, I always have a feeling that the whole day I watch them and say, yes, yes, blessings, blessings to you all, blessings to you all. So we have those affectionate guardians, as some of our governors say, who are always ready to help. One last thing, Prabhupada also did, is that he only asked us one thing, please don't keep for yourself what you've received. I believe that is the only instruction the Guru gives to his disciples. Please practice, but don't keep it to yourself, share it with others. And Prabhupada saw other, he inoculated to the virus of preaching. And if you see all of his disciples, they have that virus. Some of others are always speaking and bubbling with ideas and enthusiasm how to spread his mission, how to somehow other bring other souls. Prabhupada wrote somewhere uh, that every member of this movement has been delivered from an abominable condition of life. And therefore, we request every member of this movement to also extend a helping hand to bring other people from that condition. So, we are the Lotus Feet of Shri Guru and we are so fortunate to be, again, able to take from a saint some more directions to our personal process, to uh, increase our Krishna consciousness, to go back home, back to God.
very many of us are only here because of the mercy of Shiva just by seeing such a personality, the Sita Bhakta, the eyes are perfected. By touching their body, then the touch is perfected. By glorifying them with the tongue, then that is the perfection of speech. Such a soul is what world is very rare. So I very much appreciated to hear how from Buddha how we all been very fortunate to win the lottery not only once but twice. Some of us three times with the association of Bhakti Raksha Shiva Goswami Raj, Shiva Bhakti Raj, Shiva Bhakti Prabhupada, Gauri Maharaj, and others. So this great fortune is not a small thing. To come in contact with the Sura Bhakta is such an auspicious occasion in Jiva's life. When he's very close, after wandering through many different repeated verses asked in this world, Babar Babar Bhagavanta Yadava Vins, when he's very close receiving emancipation, freedom from the repetition of repeated birth and death, samsara, and he comes in contact with that sacred person. Brahmanda Pramte Kum Bhagavanji Guru Shri Bhai Bhakti Lakta Vins, then he gets the seed of devotion planted in his heart. So we're very fortunate to have such association and such opportunity to be in such contact with the Sula Bhakta, to hear from the Lord's lips. To stop the Brahma, the transcendence of migration emanating from their lotus lips. Taking that within our hearts, taking the instructions that are, as our life and soul, then we will be pulled out of this dungeon of this material existence and free from this material misery. Bhakti Pada Duli, Bhakti Pada Jao, Bhakti Pada Vishesha, Tina Mahabhasa. Three things are very powerful in this world. That's the Lord of Sita, the Lord of Vaishnava, the Sutta Bhakta. Bhakti Pada the water that washes their lotus feet. Bhakti Pada Vishesha, Tina Mahabhasa. The grandness of the foodstuffs. And this is assembly every day, someone at one of Gurus, devotees, is going around giving us all the grandness from Mahabharata. So we're very fortunate. As it passes by, as I see many devotees grabbing, his feet and putting their heads on his, on his feet or crying tears because they can't reach them quite. <clears throat> so we're very fortunate to be in the holiest of dhams under the guidance of such a Shuddha Bhakta. And this is a very rare opportunity, so we should take very great fortune, take advantage of this great fortune. We can be in a deep dark well and someone lowers it. A rope in it to pull us out, and he's not even saying, Oh, pull, your, pull yourself out. Just hold on, and I will pull you out. So, holding on to the lotus feet and the instructions of our Guru, Shiva Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shiva Prabhupada, and Shiva Bhaktivedanta Narayana, and Shiva Bhaktivedanta holding on to their instructions of our life and soul, this will be our good fortune so that we can be relieved from this fallen condition. <clears throat> so one of my godbrothers, when he received sannyas from Shiva Prabhupada, <coughs> Shiva Prabhupada told him, actually there was a few of that had just been given the sannyas mantras from Shiva Prabhupada. He said, Ashley, none of you are qualified, none of you are sannyasis. So they were thinking, we just got the mantra. Shiva Prabhupada said, none of you are qualified, none of you are sannyasis. And he said, battlefield condition. During a war, if there are no qualified generals, then the person leading the war will take a private, a lower person, and he'll say, oh, you be, you lead the charge now. He said, so we are on this fight against Maya. And in this fight, many of you will fall. So we are seeing many of our brothers fall. And Sri Prabhupada said, What in glory is that? Also, Sri Ramana told myself, 